Hey everyone. Yeah, you probably notice I'm in a different location right now. It's because I'm in Riverbank taking care of some taxes. My appointment's not till 2 o'clock Pacific, so what are you going to do? But yeah, I'm in Riverbank, California right now. So I thought I'd take this time when my mom's getting her taxes done to kind of uh, give you my thoughts on what I've heard so far uh, about season 9's premiere. Now, now, I haven't watched it yet, but I plan to do that later. I'm, I mean, tomorrow I plan to try to record it on DVD, just like I did last year with season 8, you know, kind of go six hours and kind of um, basically, you know, get as many episodes on there as I can. So, anyway, I'm just going to give my initial thoughts on uh, people's reactions so far. And so far, everybody's mixed reactions have been somewhat positive and somewhat mixed. I mean, you've had a few negatives in there, but so far it's kind of been like a, I would say 75-25 kind of uh, percentage. Like you have 25%, it's like, well, I'll put it this way, it's more, more along the lines of... 70, 20, 10. You've had 70% positive so far, 20% in the middle, 10% negative. And I think the reason being is because from what I understand, it's basically how, um, you know, certain things panned out. I mean, from what I understand, the way the positioning Twilight um, in her role to kind of take over as the rule of Equestria, is it's more along the lines of a it's, a it's a pacing deal in other words celestia and luna from what i understand now again i gotta go i have to watch it myself as well as read what others have had to say i'm going to be very curious as to what dr wolf and i'm sure he's going to have a group a discussion review of the episode later on today or this weekend on his on his channel but um but, but basically, from what I'm interpreting here, and again, I have to rewatch, I have to watch it later as well as get other people's opinions or see what other people say. Uh, apparently, Twilight's going to be eased into the role of ruler. In other words, it's like Celestia and Luna, they're not gone yet. They say, basically, the whole decide to retire deal is basically that. It, that when they feel Twilight is ready, she's going to officially step in. It's like they're easing her into the role, but it's not necessarily like a full-time gig just yet. And I think that's what this season is going to build up to. Because you got to remember what Lauren Faust originally said. She wanted to make Twilight, um, she wanted to make Twilight the successor to Celestia. So I'm thinking what's going on here is Nicole Dubuque, Josh Haber, and those involved are slowly easing her into that role and into that role that you know but basically slowly what I'm saying is I'm just looking around here they're just slowly easing her into that role right now and that's why you know according to one person saying she didn't take the throne just yet is because they're taking their time with her and they're building to that moment one thing that's kind of intriguing that a lot of people pointed out was there was one thing they predicted that kind of came to fruition and that is the fact that Grogar is the mastermind behind a lot of things. Now, is he the mastermind or has he been the mastermind of the entire dark magic and darkness and shadows that have been around? I can't really say, but I would assume he has been. And the fact that what a lot of fans pretty much felt was going to happen did happen and that is the uh, that he gathered basically all the villains together to kind of take down Twilight and his friend and her friends so um, I, I will put it this I will put it this way um, the way they built him up kind of just at the beginning it kind of shows you that as a lot of people put it He's not playing around, you know, Grogar is not messing around here. Um, what happened to Sombra at the end, a lot of people expected him to be defeated, but the way it was done, it's like, 
to grow car it's like no big deal to me I don't care and apparently there's a, a part in in there maybe that kind of has Grogar be like yeah uh, you see what happened to him see what happened to Sombra defy me and that will happen to you if not worse now some people have said that he's that Grogar has made Turek into or as some people have observed it he's made Turek into his BITC you know what so because apparently he just gave him a tiny bit of power to kind of get him back to half strength but just that tiny bit is enough to give him the quality of I don't know how many ponies he sucked the magic out of uh, during his initial run his debut so um, overall it kind of shows you that even with a tiny bit of magic he's more powerful than than T-Rex apparently there's going to be some fun interaction between T-Rex and Cozy and it took place as well here so you gotta wonder if maybe Turek's getting on Cozy a little bit for the fact that she became too ambitious. Um, but it's gonna be really interesting to see exactly where they go from here. You know, with those two involved. The other thing that a lot of people liked was uh, getting a kick out of, or some people are, is Crystalis's role. And how they see that she's kind of close to insanity. She's kind of close to going, and some people put a cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Puffs and everything, so... It's, it's going to be really interesting uh, to see what role she'll play. A lot of people are projecting that she's going to be the one that gets redeemed probably the first out of the villains. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what they do with that. Um, overall, it doesn't seem too bad. It doesn't seem like it's a, a bad... To me, it doesn't sound like it's a bad start. Um, a lot of people point... One person even pointed out that it's, there's a, a scene in there... I think it's after Spike gets mind controlled along with the rest of the ponies, ponies and characters that um, it's, it's Rainbow Dash that says his name first, it, it, but in a way that shows she cares very much for him. So that's kind of interesting in the eyes of a lot of fans and if you're a Spike Dash shipper, that if you're a Spike Dash shipper, that kind of, um, kind of make your, uh, cur fuel your curiosity or your intrigueness. Um, overall though, it, again, it sounds like it's a, it's a decent start. It sounds like overall, from what everybody is saying, it's a somewhat decent start. It establishes that you're going to have basically, as some people put it, a Legion of Doom-like scenario with Grogar bringing all the villains together, but also showing that Grogar um, is nothing to mess with you know he doesn't he's, he's not to be messed with and that he ain't playing no games and that you know he doesn't care if somebody gets hurt and and again this might be in my opinion this might play into crystalis being reformed a little bit because you know grogo might grogo might want to destroy you know Ocellus, who's a changeling and that might be what triggers crystalis we don't really know but it's going to be interesting to see how they play this out, especially with the Frenemies episode they got planned later on. So it's going to be interesting. But it definitely shows you that they got something planned later on. Uh, apparently D. Jones, I think, is the name of the voice of Grogar, is the one voicing Grogar. And the one thing some people will say that kind of brought it down a little bit was the way Sombra was portrayed. Like, you know, it was portrayed being more like, you know, hey, you got to have all your chips in place before you do anything. And he didn't have all his chips in place. He didn't play the right cards when he needed to. Um, so, yeah, there was a lot of uh, situations, apparently. <laughs> so there were plot points like that that, you know, some people didn't like. And, um, and of course, there were some good one-liners like, you know, Rainbow Dash and I guess the staff decided you know what we'll have it decided to decided to have Ashley Ball throw this throw this bone to the fans with the line by saying or acknowledging that Celestia and Luna don't really do anything in, in a crisis so I can't wait to hear what Dr. Wolf and the others have to say about that but um, overall uh, I will say again that it the overall presentation to me it sounds like it's a decent start may not be the very best. I mean, a lot of people are saying it is probably one of the best, if not the best premieres 
seasonally for the show, especially if it's the last season, or especially it being the last season. Some again were kind of mixed about it. Some liked it. Some didn't. Some liked it, and some you know some liked certain parts. The other thing they didn't like was like the pacing and all that. And some just didn't like it due to the fact that, you know, like I said, the pacing and Sombra and all that, the way it was done. So, so overall, it sounds like, like I said, a very decent uh, premiere uh, overall from my understanding. Again, I'm, again, we still have a lot more people having to chime in and seeing what, and kind of see what they have to say on social media, the MLP forms, the Christia Daily, YouTube, you name it. So... But really, I just thought I'd come on here give my thoughts on the initial reactions to to My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, the final season premiere here, season 9 premiere. I'll probably come back later on, hopefully, to do a live, uh, to do maybe a live or overall review and thoughts on the episode in general. So that's all really I want to say, guys, from here in Riverbank, California. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on what your thoughts what your thoughts are on some of the initial reactions and what were your initial reactions when you first saw the episode, the premiere. Let me know down below. Comment if you like. Again, I'll probably be back down the line later with a probably full-on full review when I get a chance. So let me know what you guys think, and I'm out.